So I'm just gonna get into it. I um I didn't plan this live stream out at all. Um just kind of uh wanted to get get online and show you guys. Sound is good. Oh, thank you so much, Jay. Okay. <laughs> I was hoping to to uh to get the uh get the okay from somebody. So um yeah, so uh, not a really planned event. That's why you know it's it just showed up in in Discord. But I just figured I'd show you guys what I was working on because um, this is something I've been working on over the past few weeks um, and uh, just starting to put it together. And and I figured it would be cool to uh, share it with you in the prototype stages. So it's kind of like so you can kind of see you know where. Uh, where I'm, where I'm coming from with uh, with the design and 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 what my thoughts were for the cube going forward. So if you are you're probably familiar with this by now. If you have seen my channel, if you have seen the videos, um, I have these. Um, I designed this little multi-sensor um, enclosure with uh, with the little board for the enclosure. I don't have the original version up in here somewhere, maybe, but. Um, basically, it's a carrier board for the Node MCU. Um, right there. Okay. So, a Node MCU goes on a carrier board. Um, then I have a DHT22 sensor here, and then I have um, breakouts for all the Node MCU pins in case you want to do anything anything additional with this. And I use them for sensors around the house, temperature, humidity, motion. And I use them for I use them as LED controllers. With the LED controller design is basically same same guts, but the enclosures are different. So basically, I wanted to um, do something new with this. I wanted to come up with something that was a little more modular and um, did more things and also fix, fix some problems that I found with this design over time. So the idea is um, basically, well, the, the, the one of the things I wanted to fix is the board itself. The breakout board had a few issues I wasn't happy with, um, and I did a live stream on, the, on this board already. This is the version 2 board, or 1.2 I call it. Um, and one of the biggest problems I had was the I squared C level shifter that I was using. It was very slow shifter, um, not not very reliable, and I had issues with using it for the LED strip controller. Um, fortunately, the WS2812 LED strips I use don't really care about um, getting a full five volt data voltage, so I haven't had any issues like that. But I wanted to fix that issue anyway just to make it more reliable for people that were using these boards um, with other LED strips. So I'm using a, ver a very fast um, 74 HCT 125 and um, level shifter, four, four channel level shifter. So that should fix that problem. So I can use these boards with LED strip controllers of, you know, even the, even the most um, um, you know, even the, the, the LED ships that re do require a 5 volt data line. So uh, that was one of the issues that I wanted to fix. The other problem was there used to be a resistor here. I was just using it as a pull up for pull down for uh, for the DHT22 sensor. Um, the Node MCU has built in full pull down, so I didn't really need it. The uh, DHT22 was working without it. So I got rid of the resistor and replaced it with the Schottky diode. Because one of the other problems I had. Um, there's deep sleep function. There's you know I mean, there's reset functionality built into this board, and rather than um, well, the the resistor was basically used for the DHT22 sensor, but I've had problems with with these board with the original boards um, reloading firmware, flashing firmware on the Node MCU. So I know um, the the proper fix for that is to boot to put a uh, Schottky diode BAT43 between the reset line and D0, uh, GPIO 16. So that's um, that's another fix I did for this. Um, the 
other things were kind of like different pin layouts for the for these external external connectors here. Um, I was definitely using GPIO pins on the Node MCU that aren't really meant to be used for external GPIO. Um, so I wanted to I, I started using this board with ESP Easy, so I wanted to switch to I squared C um, sensors and and OLED screens and everything. And I, I do use an I squared C OLED screen, but I was using the wrong um, I squared C pins for the clock and data line. So I wanted to make sure I was using D1, D2 for I squared C like uh, the standard pin set that they use. Um, and then speaking of I squared C, I didn't really have anything. I, I wasn't really using this, this header here for anything. So that kind of gave me an idea of where to go with these um, going forward. Like one of the, one of the problems I had with building these sensors, one of the things that took the, big, the longest time was installing the OLED screen because uh, if you've seen the video, I basically strip out the the header pins from the OLED OLED screen and replace them with wire, and then I connect the wire to the outside pins here on the breakout board. Um, that wasn't, you know, that wasn't too hard, but it, it definitely took time, and I, I figured I could make it make things a little bit easier. So I actually designed a little sub module board. So basically, and this is the first, you know, first batch of these that came from PCBWay. Um, by the way, I gotta give a shout out to these guys. Um, PCBWay is uh, has been very nice to me. They're uh, they're actually sponsoring. Uh, all my boards now um, so I get, I get I have gotten all my boards from them and now they're actually sending them to me um, for for the purpose of, of showing them to you guys on the channel so uh, thanks to PCBWay and I definitely recommend them they make real great quality boards um, really fast I mean if you get their DHL shipping um, you know with 10 boards for basically you can get 10 boards for about 20 bucks shipped to your door uh, within a week, you know, like I've, I've, I haven't had any issues with 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 them making these. And I mean, I ordered this board earlier this week, and I already have it in my hands. So they're really good about that. But anyway, the sub module board I designed is basically um, a carrier board for the OLED screen. So the OLED will fit right here. And then I have more breakout pins here. And these breakout pins match these on the main board. So basically, when we put them together, uh, one on top of the other, you can basically um, stack these sensors um, and stack multiple of these boards all the way up as many as we need. So that's the bottom line. That's the bottom line design change with uh, with with the new cube. Um, I want to have it where you know you have the main module for Node MCU and um, external connector, the level shifter, like all the base logic stuff ha uh, is handled on this uh, base module board. And then I want to have different sub modules for the cube that you know. I build that people design and, and help me design and build and give me ideas for. So, um, yeah. So, so, so basically, I wanted to do um, something more modular for, uh, you know, going forward. And uh, Cyber ISSO is here. Uh, that's Chris. And uh, thank you so much, Chris. Um, Chris was kind enough to. Well, number one, he's you know he's been helping me. I've been bouncing ideas off of him, and he's you know he's been. Um, Kind of my um, supporter and 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 helping me uh, get through uh, different designs and and you know I, every time I designed a board or, or something I shot it his way and and got his uh, you know comments on it and then he you know since my printer is down right now my 3D printer is down right now he was kind enough to um, print these um, new cube enclosure designs for me as well so. Um, maybe I'll show you that. Show you that right now. So, thank you, Chris. Thanks for that. Um, let me switch over to Fusion. So, 
this is the new uh, new new cube basically in you know in a, a 3D model of it. Um, and again, let me start from the from the bottom. This is the um, this is the base module essentially with the node MCU and the breakout board. And then I made an opening for the six pins of the I squared C header. And there's, I mean, there's five volts, three volts, um, power lines going through this header, the two GPI opens for I squared C, uh, D1, D2. Um, I also uh, put D4 on here. D4 is used for all the LED, LED strips and LED projects out there like um, ESP Pixel Stick and um, MC Lighting and uh, a couple others. So I wanted, and, and, and my uh, Brawl animations and my uh, fork of Brawl animation as well. So um, D4 is kind of like the de facto standard uh, LED pin. So I put that on here as well. And then uh, obviously the ground pin. So essentially you'll have this base module um, and then you can have any number like I said you can stack any number of uh, modules on top of that and we'll put the cover on that one first and then I'll stack the L OLED and uh, and this sensor uh, board on top of that so this would be basically what the old cube was except um, slightly better and, and more modular um, and then as we design as we think of other ideas other modules to put in the stack um, that's that's basically where where they will go so you can have different builds of this of this unit with uh, different uh, functionality or, or um, even power supplies so like I know um, I can probably show you this as well so I'm having kind of, you know, I have, I have a lot of ideas with this, but like, you know, one of the things I'm working on now is um, actually Chris came up with this one. Um, this is the uh, AC power board. So essentially, you can have, we're, we're going to have, you know, one of these modules will be an AC input module. So you'll have power coming in through um, this Phoenix connector here, uh, terminal connector. Screw, screw type. Um, I put some holes in the board so we can uh, zip tie the, the the wires coming in for strain relief. Um, then it'll go they'll go through a fuse, and it'll go into this AC power supply. This AC power supply is the same power supply um, Luma uses on his um, Hasp boards. So I wanted to kind of make that uh, available. Um, use the same. I mean, you know, it's it's a good power supply, so I want to use the same design here. And I know Luma has been making some changes to his board to incorporate DC DC power supplies. So maybe before I actually make this board or make this module, um, I'll throw some of those on here as well. So you can do either AC or DC power in. Um, that could be useful for uh, power over Ethernet, power, powering or, or 24 volt DC if you have it somewhere uh, running within your walls or something. And then basically this this little sub module would sit in the middle of the stack um, between the OLED screen module and the base module. So you can have a, you know a sandwich of of, of cube modules that uh, perform a specific function. And because it's all you know over I squared C, you can throw in other sub modules in there too. Like um, I want to do a sub module for the ADS one 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 eleven fifteen um, analog input module or analog I/O module, um, and then you know the sky's the limit really. You know, I mean, we can stack this thing as high, high as we want. I know I squared C is addressable serial, so you can uh, put different modules in there, and as long as uh, the software on the board handles it, that should be fine. Um, see, Charlie's online. Um, Charlie B. Charlie B. Gabriel, um, welcome. Thanks for uh, thanks for showing up. I know you you've been pretty much on every live stream, Charlie. So thanks thanks for uh, supporting. Okay, so that's the three D model, right? And that's uh, that's what we've been kind of working on. I've, I know I've been sharing the uh, 
progress and, and kind of sneak peeks and photos on the Discord server. So uh, those of you who are, on, who are in the chat server um, can see that. And, you know, and I guess, you know, here we are. I have, I have the boards, I have the modules, and we can kind of start building the prototype unit of these. Um, one of the things with the, with the enclosures, I already know I have to fix. Um, and it's basically the, uh, the wall thickness. I need, I, I kind of, I was trying to make this as low profile as possible. So like one of the goals was to make it, you know, make the temperature sensor smaller than the original. And it is, you know, it's definitely a shorter stack. I, I shaved off as much plastic as I could off of this. Um, but the walls are a little thin. They feel a little, um, wonky like you could probably just break this thing in, in in half so definitely won't be able to build this unit with with these with these um enclosures because the uh walls were too thin and, and they just kind of cracked open so but the, the 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 idea is that you know once i um i already fixed the model and i know chris was already printing a second version of it but hopefully, if we get this strong enough, we can just, you know, build a board, build a sub-module, and then stack them together, and they will hold to, hold to each other. So, I just wanted to show you these. I'm not really going to build the, uh, the the modules or using the enclosures. Um, but that's 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 kind of what we're what we're doing here. So, um. The thing that are kind of already pre-built the base module, so we can do that already. Um, but the real big thing, big deal that I wanted to share with you about this new design is the sensor itself. So another thing that Chris has been helping me with, and actually um, Chris CyberEyes, so I hope I can call you by name here. <laughs> so CyberEyes is so is uh, is in the chat. Um, he found this. Um, pretty cool little sensor board from TE, um, TE Connectivity. It's a pre-designed um, module that has about seven, I think, different sensors on here. And they all, um, they're all connected to the same board. They're handling, you know, all the um, filtering and, and handling for for them is done on the board on the on the little MCU on the board, and then the board connects to other devices via I squared C. So it's pretty awesome. It's a, it's got a PIR sensor on here. There's a temperature and humidity sensor, um, a mic for audio, and um, I think well, it's a light sensor for yep luminosity and a co2 and vocs sensor so basically a full environmental sensor in this little tiny tiny board i mean it's pretty uh pretty amazing um you can get the base version of this where it only has the pir sensor the temperature and humidity and luminosity so those four sensors that four core um board costs Fourteen, fifteen dollars on Arrow.com with overnight shipping. So I don't think you can really beat that, or you know, it's not, you know, it's not like your um, DHC22 sensors that you can probably get for like a couple bucks, um, or these PIR sensors that you can get for probably even cheaper than that. But the important thing about this guy is that it is much, much more precise. And yeah, the um, the 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 absolute like precision of of this thing is worth worth the extra money. Um, you know, finally a PIR sensor that doesn't suck. That's my that's that's my best take on this thing. Um, if you've seen some of my other videos on 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 the channel, um, I used these sensors for motion, and I've also used um these am2312 i think that's the model name model number for this one um and both of these are just crap you know like there's um i don't know if it's the 
the build quality or if it's just the fact that they're not meant to be used with um, Wi-Fi um, microcontrollers or around you know big you know large sources of Wi-Fi or RF in, in general um, but I get I, I have so many false positives with with the sensor you know it just it'll sit there I'll, I'll have it covered and it'll just flip up and down um, no matter what I you know no matter what I've tried I've, I know I've, I made a video about um, not even using the direct uh, I open on this sensor rather using the um, 3.3 or there's I'm, I'm sorry there's a pin on, on this sensor where you where you can bypass the 5 volts to 3.3 volt voltage regulator and that helped and it kind of made the sensor work a little bit better but over time it just deteriorated I think I think there's something about these things that just not doesn't doesn't work the way you um, the, the way you you intend it to I think these were intended for Arduinos and um, you know, hobbies style motion detect detection, but for home automation, for, for the stuff that we use these for, you definitely need something that's more commercial or, or just meant for the application. And I'll tell you that I've kind of, I've, I already had this thing running. Um, I've had this thing running with the Node MCU for the past week or so. And you know, just to show you, um, let me do that. Let me bring that out here. Okay, and then this is my Grafana um, setup that I made for for this sensor. Um, and for for this version, for the version that I had here, I I, I was just tracking temperature, humidity, motion, and ambient light. So I mean, this is just the past two, well, past three hours, basically, right? So um, these motion events are actual motion events. You know, there's um, nothing, like, I, I haven't been down here, like, n near the sensor for the past couple days. And let's see, uh, let's just do the last two days, right? So you can see, like, the light sensor was at zero or one lux basically the whole time it just kicked up because i just came down here and turned on the lights um the motion sensor before today nothing not a single false positive not, not a single blip and i had this sensor running on the node mcu that sends the data to my mqtt broker but i also had this um you know the uh the other cube sensor that I'm showing you here, I had it basically right next to the board just to try to, you know, try to um, cause RF interference and nothing, not, not, not a single blip. So um, I like that. I like how smooth this temperature chart here is. It's very, you know, it seems very precise. There's no blips on that either. Um, same with humidity, and I know people have have said the DHD sensor isn't that great for measuring humidity, but I haven't really had issues with it. But I think this is even better, so that's awesome. The light sensing is is great as well. Okay, so yeah, so one of the things that I wanted to do with this cube redesign is build the sensor into it. Um, I wanted to have the motion sensor kind of motion temperature and humidity um, built into the, uh, the the cube design itself. Um, and you know, one of the problems that came uh, across is the ESP Easy firmware did not support this board right out of the bat. So I uh, got down, you know, got down to it, got the code from from. Um, GitHub from the ESP Easy GitHub, and I and I wrote a plugin for for the sensor. So, um, if you look at my GitHub repository, there's a fork of the ESP Easy um, playground uh, re repo, and you can get the um, files or you can get the the plugin source code for um, for this board. So it will support 
uh, temperature, humidity, light, and motion right now. Um, I got to figure out. I had to figure out how to support the other sensors because the ESP Easy um, plugin framework only supports four channels of sensor data. As you know, so I think I need to create something like a separate plugin or, or two different plugins with 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 the different data. All right, so. I think we're ready. Um, can we get basically? Um, I think I'm ready to start building this thing together and, and seeing if it actually works. This will be the first time this this thing ever um, gets built, so hopefully it works. If not, I mean, we'll fix it. So here's the OLED screen. I'll make sure that that board is sitting flat and even. And if you guys have any ideas for future sensors or future boards, definitely share them with me. Um, I like this kind of stuff. I like designing these, these little sensors so I can uh, or if you want to design yourself, I'll, I'll probably at some point I'll, I'll build up a GitHub repo for all the all the uh, board designs, all the models, and 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 the plugins, so we can kind of build build something out of this, like build a whole sensor platform out of this. So the next thing we need to do, I already have the OLED um, attached to this. Um, if you've looked at these I squared C OLEDs, um, sometimes they come with a different pinout than than this. Like this is ground, VCC, clock, and data. And I know I've had some of them that come with the pinout of VCC, ground, then clock and data. So just to make that flexible, I added these four solder bridges on the back of the board. So I'll show them to you real close. Um, Basically, you know, like you you get to pick the pin that uh, that goes to each of these pins to the main header board. So, first one here is ground. So I'm gonna do um, I'm gonna solder across the middle pin of the bridge and the ground ground pad. And then the second one is three v three. So I know I need to do the second in the same way. Jason, hi Jason. Um, welcome, welcome to the live stream and yeah, we'll, we'll definitely take a look at your um, your MTTT stuff once I once we get through this stuff. I know you had issues with uh, with your um, scroller. All right, so ground v three v three, and then it goes clock and clock and data. Yep, clock and data. So that basically all left bridges. So okay. So this is basically what completed solder bridge setup will look like for this particular board design. Okay. All right, and then the next step will be to actually connect this um, PE Ambimate sensor board. For this prototype, I'll use Let's see, there's one here. I'll use this, this basic one, because I don't want to use the one with all the other sensors around here yet. So this one has uh, PIR, light, temperature, humidity. 
and none of the other sensors, none, uh, no, um, no audio VOCs or C CO2. Okay, so the way I the way I set this up is um, I made through hole pins for um, they make they make this board in two different flavors. One is a castellated, basically you know just shows you it has the um, uh, pins kind of off and you know it's slightly smaller, slightly thinner board. And then the other version of it is regular through hall, which, which would go into this board as well. So it doesn't really matter which one you get. The castellated version version is a couple bucks bucks cheaper, um, and it, and both of them will work with this with this layout. So it will be a little challenging on it. Probably should be using some sort of tape or something to uh, stick this on. But I'll just get the first couple pins. Well, I'll do it this way. I'll get, it. I'll get the solder on these pins here, on these pads. And then I will melt the board into them. Or not. You know what? Somebody gave me a good idea before. Um, got this Loctite putty for uh, just this occasion. <laughs> so, yep, that'll hold the border a little bit better. Okay, so maybe it, maybe it is better to use the through hole version just because it's easier to slide around. But we'll get it. All right, and the other five pins should be a little bit easier. All right, I want to make sure that the, well, I already see one that didn't quite reach the pin. Oops, there's a jump. Try that one more time. my little magnifying glass here to make sure I didn't make any world connections. Cool. Looks good. So that's the F word C board. Now um I already have the other sensor pre programmed so I'm gonna use that one. I'll use the no MCU from from the other board. Save us some time. So that's the Node MCU that I already had programmed with the ESP Easy, um, with my fork of ESP Easy with the plugin running on it. So hopefully, if I get the 
it's in there. So now I need to connect these two together. Um, and one thing that I want to do before that is cut off these excessively long pins from the OLED. And then, so normally what I would do, right, is, um, well, I mean, this, this would go into the base module here. And well, it should. Let me see. Okay, it fits, it's a little tight, so I already see I already have to make another small adjustment to the uh, model. The um, Node MCU sticks out. This is a, a version 0 0.9 of the Node MCU, so it's a little um, thicker in the, uh, you know, it's, it's a little wider and, and definitely sticks out a little bit more. So I need to adjust that in the, in the model, but I will before, uh, before we work anything. Uh, yeah, I definitely need a smaller, smaller tip for the soldering iron. Yes, I do. Um, what I need is basically, I, I have the um, TS-80. I, I bought that, the little um, portable iron. So I have, a, I have a really small fine tip for that one. And then the main one, the, uh, what is it? The Yihua 853D is what I use for my main iron. And I just put the... Uh, I put the wire widest tip on this one. Okay. All right. Anyway, so we have these two modules here. Like this one will go into the base module. This one will um, go into the second case here, and it does fit pretty well. Um, the thing that I'm going to need to and the thing that obviously we still need is a Fresnel lens for the PIR sensor. These are these TE boards don't come with the Fresnel lens, but I found one that will fit, and um, I ordered a, a couple of them for um, just for testing. So um, I'll let you know how that works out, and if it does, we'll basically figure out some way to get those um, more accessible. I have to talk to. Uh, Talk to the vendor. So, yeah. So, the thing that we need to do, obviously, is to uh, build the pins between these two boards. So, most of the Wemos D1 minis come with these extra long uh, female headers, and they are definitely, uh, definitely, definitely uh, the right height. They, 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 they're exactly what we need. Um, except that they're eight pins. So I got myself, well, I got myself this kit, and I actually got myself this kit here of um, different sizes and you know different pin sizes and different header sizes. So just for testing, basically, I got I got this setup. I, you could you know you could cut off the extra pins of the longer ones if you had the longer ones, but Bottom line, you want to stick the header into this board here. Huh. You know what? I think these are, well, they shouldn't be. They should be the same size. I'm just, yep, you just got to get them aligned, right? Ugh. Yep, there we go. For for a second there, I thought maybe the pad sizes I used were wrong. Um, but yeah, you, basically you, these are I think um, 19 millimeter or 21 millimeter uh, female headers. So at the full height, if they're inserted like this, they just barely clear the Node MCU, the ESP chip on the Node MCU. So I think with uh, these headers going into this enclosure, they should basically stick out through the through the hole in the in the enclosure. 
So that will make this module basically flush, you know, and then like you can stick either, you know, the second module into it or um, could even stick the uh, DuPont wires into it or the LED strip um, connector. So either way, whatever, whatever we need. Um, and then we're going to basically solder this in now so we can test out the whole connection. Cool. Yep. Should work just fine. And then for this side, for this board, I originally got these really long male header pins. These are all the way up to 21 millimeters. So they will definitely reach a lot higher, but um, I don't think we need them anymore. Because with, with this female header being so high, the um, module coming out of this board will sit much lower, um, so we can gen we can basically use a, a standard male header, and that that will be fine. So I got these, and I need a six. Alright, get that soldered in. Use too much solder, and I bridged the five volt pin and the SOC pin. That's not that's not gonna work. Cool. All right, let's make sure I didn't leave any bridge connections. All right, that's pretty good. So that's the completed board right here with the TE sensor on top, uh, the OLED going through, male headers, and then the OLED pins selected in the um, in the correct position. <clears throat> So then, that's all that's left to do is mate these male male to female from the daughter board to the uh, base board, and that's our stack. So we have the base module, uh, base board with the Node MC on top of it, and then the OLED and TE on the second level. So, um, guess we plug it in and see what happens, right? <laughs> I haven't tested the OLED board yet, so I'm not sure if it'll work. I have tested the baseboard um, pretty well. So, what's the worst that can happen, right? All right. So, did it actually turn on or not? Let's see if it came back on the server. 
Good luck. Boo. Alright, well, let's see what happens with, uh, with our non interview. Huh, so actually, uh, turning on at all. On the base board itself, that should not be the case. Oh, you know what? I forgot something completely. Okay. I know exactly what the problem is. But for now, let's try to. Oh, I think it forgot its Wi Fi too. Yay. Joy to life training, boy. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Um, for some reason, the node MTU is not powering up. And it's probably the third one in the batch that I kind of uh, didn't think was fully operational. So. Let's see, maybe I don't need to use a different one, but it's already not good. Oh, wow. Okay, you know what? I unplugged everything just to find out that, well, I'll let you see this yourself. Yeah, that's not going to work. <laughs> So after all this time, all, all this, uh, you know, that's that's exactly why this thing wasn't working. I didn't have I didn't have the other end of the cable plugged in. Isn't that first question that you uh, you get when you call live, you know, tech support? Hey, is it plugged in? Oh boy! All right, yeah, I definitely made a fool of myself here. So you guys are uh, welcome to laugh at me. But all right, so um, but speaking of um, errors and mistakes, one of the things I did I did not do, and I already know that's going to be a problem, is um, I need to select the um, level shifting as well because the um, 748CT125 N is now in line with the header pins here. So D1, D2, and D4 go through the 748CT125. I don't have that board. I don't have that IC in here. So I built, um, you know, in case you needed to use it or in case you didn't need to use it. Um, basically, I built a little solder bridge here to bypass um, bypass that power so, or bypass the level shifting. So we need to. Make sure that those get selected as well. And in this case, I'll just select all to be bypassed. All right, so there's a shift on top, bypass on the bottom. So I'll need to select all four for bypass. I still can't believe I didn't plug in this freaking thing. That's awesome. Okay. Anyway, I think we're Okay now bypass, bypass. Bypass and bypass. Cool. So now if I get the Oh, it's like, well, where's the no, let's see right here. Okay. I will say these no, um, no let's see, 0 0.9 are harder to come by anymore. Um, things it seems like everyone's shifted to the 1.0 version, so. 
Okay, so now, still not seeing any power on here. Or LED. Oh, there, LED's on. LED doesn't turn on on this one. So, I'll just make sure that I can access the ESP Easy server, and I can. Um, let's see if I can show you the interface with the overhead cam. So, okay, there it is. So this is the ESP Easy interface um, for this board. I have it set up for the OLED, and I have it set up for uh, TE and the Mate. Um, OLED's disabled right now, so let me enable it. I didn't even set this up before before this, so. And one, let's see if we can get this configured real quick. Mit. The sensor board, temperature, humidity. Okay, so we configure the OLED for animate temperature. And line two. will be humidity. Oh. And then I think can't remember what I named the other two channels. So let's go back to devices. Oh, light and motion. Simple enough. Okay, so this will switch between the two different screens, line per frame, one. Um, all right, let's do all four for now, so we don't, so we see all four pieces of data on the same screen, same layout. SSD 1306, let me just make sure everything's set correctly. No display button, no timeout, contrast high, and interval, um, will be 30 seconds. Because I think that's how fast I have the sensor changing. Okay. Cool. All right, so the sensor's up, and if I plug in the OLED, well, let me do that with the power turned off again. Not that it should matter, but just in case. Ah, look at that. Came up. Um, okay, so it is rotated. <laughs> and, and yeah, I'll, let me rotate backwards. Reverse it, rotation. Rotated, submit, there it is. Okay, so what I'm not seeing is the okay, so I'm seeing temperature, humidity, and light data on the Oh, there it is. Okay, just needed to refresh. All right, so let me see if I can bring this closer to the camera and have you guys see it as well. So that little LED that you saw light up on the Ambimate sensor, that was a motion sensor um, registering a motion event. So I can't get this thing to focus. Hello. All right, maybe that's getting better. But yeah, so right now it's showing all four lines on the same screen. 
um, showing temperature of 73 Fahrenheit, 26% humidity, 215 light. So if and zero for motion, zero or one, um, one is a motion event, right? So if I kind of cover the light sensor here, you know what? Before I do that, just so it's a little faster, I'll change the refresh rate to five seconds on the sensor and the OLED screen. So normally you wouldn't want to do this. I think 30 seconds or even every minute is good enough. But for now, that's basically what I'll do. So just so I can show you guys exactly what I'm looking at here. So 73, 22% humidity, 227 light, and zero for motion. And I don't expect this motion to behave as well with uh, without the Fresnel lens, but I am getting values here. I'm getting the light changing, and the motion nip yep, motion popped up now, and you can kind of see that one should be able to see it change to a zero. So every time um, every time I'm setting a motion event, the plugin reads that motion event and forwards it via uh, MQTT to well to that Grafana setup and, and, and OpenHab as well. But yeah, this is um this is actually working, which is uh cool, uh exciting. Um and I think we're you know we're pretty close to having kind of a you know, I mean it, it is a prototype, right? But I think we're pretty close to having something that will be more um finished pretty soon so I will definitely be working on, on improvements to it over time there's the motion again so yeah so so the motion sensor is working real well I think um, I've been using these Fresnel lens from from the AM2312 and they're a little bit bigger than what what I ended up getting for this the whole problem with with the with the with the sensor the, you know the only problem with the sensor being a, you know and mul you know multiple sensors on the same board is that if I use too big of a too large of a PIR Fresnel lens that will cover the light sensor below it so right now that light sensor is a little covered so, and also the Fresnel, sen Fresnel lens is not ideally over the middle of it so it's not well aligned, but it's it's picking up motion events. There, that's one. I'm gonna stop moving for a second. Zero again. That's one. I just saw that LED blink. All right. Zero again. One. I'm looking at the uh, screen. Maybe uh, I should show you this as well. Let's see, let's see if I can get that. So you guys don't think I'm just <laughs> sitting here and uh, making things. Yep, the light turned on. Um, shoot. Okay, so what's happening with this is I'm using a pretty wide screen. All right, so look at this. Look at this one here. Look at this motion right here, and then look at my hand on the um, on this on uh, over the sensor. So as I move my hand, oh, okay, now it's not working. Now the PIR Fresnel lens didn't align again. But, okay, it's definitely picking up here. Okay, easier. Let's make this easier. Um, let me show you on Grafana over the last five minutes. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, it's not going to show it the way I want it to show it. It's going to show it a, um, full motion because my microphone is not set up correctly. So, all right. Well, you'll have to trust me on my word. 
but it is uh it is much much uh, much more precise and much and like yeah it's blinking so it's definitely registering it's just a matter of uh of me showing that to you in a reliable way that's not really possible right now but yeah so um the i think once we get the enclosure printed out and get the fresnel lens that i ordered once that comes in i'll uh i'll put it all together and and we'll build you know build one of these complete and then um go from there like I, like i said i'll i'll obviously share the uh share the design put it on my github put it on hackster uh make videos about it on youtube and um uh, you know allow you guys to to make your own or um you know or if you prefer uh, I'll, I'll probably put them on my tindy store as well at some point once once the design is more final and i'm i'm happy with it i'll definitely uh definitely put it up there so we can have comments uh chris uh you could use motion to uh to turn on oled it looks great yeah um that's actually a good idea yeah that's uh that's what i was thinking about too like if you have the oled just sitting there um you know s sitting dark and then basically turn on the motion that's 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 a great idea you definitely should, should uh, work that in and i think you can do that with the spev rules um so so it's all self-contained on one device um gonna have to look into that but definitely definitely a good idea um how is how often oh hey uh hey ken uh long time no see you i, I saw i saw you on on discord like last week but it's been a pretty busy week for me so i so i'm sorry if i haven't been uh answering all the uh all the messages there on on, on time um how often is the status of the pir sensor red uh one second five seconds so um the way i designed the plugin the way the plugin framework is designed in esp easy you can either do a um periodic read of all the sensors which is what i do for temperature humidity and the light um then you can also do a much faster much different rate for other sensors so for the pir for the motion sensor i th I think I'm reading that every second. Um, might even be every, you know, ten times a second because there's there's different rates you can select in the plugin. I'll have to look. I'll have to look back into the code. But I think um, I think it's it's being read every second, which should be enough. You know, I mean, it's, it's picking up all the motion that I'm throwing at it right now. I just changed the one. That red LED right here, as long as it it blips which means that the motion is detected um as soon as i read it from the board over i squared c it resets the register resets so the uh, the led goes goes dark again um cool so that's kind of what i wanted to show you here i mean i i, I didn't i didn't think this was going to work to be honest but it uh it did so <laughs> pretty uh pretty happy about that i think uh i think we we got a good design here and uh and like i said if you have any other ideas for 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 this board for um for other boards that we can build the stack with you know I, I know um i have ideas i you know the i had ideas for the original cube that i didn't like having a separate sensor or a separate cube or separate enclosure uh to build off of off of that one so having it all within the same stack might be better um analog sensors is something i wanted to do and you know analog inputs on the esp 8266 are not great it uses a 10 10 bit adc with a one volt range so very very poor resolution um, but the ads 1115 adc breakout will allow you to do 16 bit adc with a full range zero to five volts so much better resolution. So I'm going to build a board that connects over I squared C to the Node MCU for analog input channels, um, and then I'll have probably a block of Phoenix Compact terminals off that board, so we can plug in all the different different things into it. Um, 
there's a couple other things I've kind of looked at uh, doing the I don't have it here right now but there's a um, there's like a little Wheatstone bridge um, scale um, strain, strain gauge set for, for scales so that would be a great um, addition for the ADS1115 and you could interface that through through the cube um, to to your um, you know to your hub and then other ideas um, I know I have maybe I mentioned it at some point but maybe not I have a um, analog uh, differential pressure gauge differential pressure reader and I've always wanted to do something that would monitor my uh, HVAC my um, heating and air conditioning unit um, pr pressures basically so with the cube the original idea was that I would have one of these in every room and then I would connect it to a servo and basically that servo would drive the um, air you know the, the HVAC registers in my room open or closed to be able to have zonal heating or cooling in my in my house or made zone heating or cooling. Um, I know one of the problems that most people that are familiar with HVAC I've talked to have said is you know you have to be careful with the back pressure and 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 um, the pressure of your blower the blower motor um, to keep that within range. So you can't close all the vents and and uh, expect the system to run as as efficiently. So I wanted to monitor that using. Um, the, you know, you're using a sensor for for this board, and I can do that using. Uh, I found a differential pressure sensor for it um, that basically outputs an analog signal. So I would connect that to the ADS 1115. So those those are just a couple ideas, um, and just a couple things I've been working on. So yeah, I think uh, I think that's everything I, I had. I, want, I wanted to kind of do a quick live stream on this stuff. Um, let's see. I know Jason, you uh, you had questions about the MQTT stroller, so I think uh, I'm wondering if uh, wondering what the best way to do that would be. Whether we stay on the live stream for that, or maybe we'll just go back on uh, Discord, and uh, I can get connected with you, and and we can uh, we can work through those issues. So. Um, let me uh, let me end that here, and then Jason, I'll talk to you back on on the Discord server, on the Discord chat. Okay. Cool. So uh, thanks again for watching, and uh, thanks for hanging out with me, um, and and watching this prototype basically come come to life. So I'm pretty excited about this. I'll post this up on uh, on the YouTube channel, and and um, all the updates will will be on the discord server as well so if you haven't if you haven't seen or joined this the discord server yet let's let's do that um you know just uh click on the click on the link that's uh in in the video description all right thanks again for watching and until next time this is bk hobby take care